So I think it, it it's something to consider. But if you consider it in the same light as, say, platinum, platinum is 15 times rarer than gold. So why isn't platinum 15 times the price of gold? I want to get started with the price action that we've seen in silver since it rose sharply in 2020. Um, and it's been moving sideways for the most part. And there's been debate as to whether silver will play a more industrial role or a more monetary role up ahead and how that could impact the price action. So with all that in mind, what do you think the catalysts could be for a move higher in silver up ahead? All right, there's a bit to unpack there. First of all, silver at the present time, according to the Silver Institute, is 55% in industrial metal. And if you go back two decades, it was 35%. So it's increased significantly over the last two decades. However, it's also a monetary metal and has been. In fact, the United States was founded on a silver standard, not a gold standard. And that was changed in 1873 when what's called the crime of 1873 when the Eastern bankers basically went put it, put the U.S. on a gold standard. So where we go in the future is uh, <clears throat> dependent upon a catalyst. And what is that catalyst? The catalyst will be monetary driven. Uh, the reason being is that there's pretty much a steady offtake in the industrial side. So that doesn't vary very much over time. And it increases, as I said. But what the variable is investment demand. And investment demand ebbs and flows. And I know you have some other questions because you sent them to me ahead of time. So I won't answer it ahead of time. But uh, all markets move at the margin. So what's the, the biggest variable? It's really not silver jewelry. It's really not silverware. It's investment demand. People that say, oh, I need to buy silver. It's a safe haven or it's too low in price. It's going to go higher. Or, you know, I found out about the solar panels increasing, probably doubling within the next few years and anything that, you know, causes them to take action. Absolutely. It's about 10% of the market now and it'll probably double before 2030. And uh, I think it's in a later question, but I'll answer it now. There is the new solar panels actually use more silver per panel than less. And for the last two decades, they've been what's called thrifting, using less and less silver per panel to get the same amount of kilowatts of output. But what they've discovered is with putting more silver in, they can like really increase the output. So it's, it's more efficient. It's better, you know, bang for the buck. So the new panels are going to take about 80% of the market. So a lot of people think, well, you know, the old style will be predominantly the new the market going forward and that is not true the ones that use the more most silver will be the predominant uh, solar panels moving forward and i want to talk about the gold silver ratio because the current gold silver ratio is at about 83 to 1 meaning it takes approximately 83 ounces of silver to buy one ounce of gold this is in stark contrast to the amount of silver actual, compared to gold in the Earth's crust, which is estimated around 16 to 1. So do you think we could see that gap get closer to its real ratio in terms of the price? Um, will it eventually correct to the actual supply of silver versus gold? Could it land somewhere in the middle? What are your thoughts there? Well, first of all, the natural ratio, what's coming out of the Earth, is actually 8 to 1. The 16 to 1 is often talked about all over the internet it's kind of a pet peeve of mine because that's the monetary ratio that's what uh you know some men decided was the correct ratio monetarily 16 ounces of silver bought one ounce of gold so i think it, it it's something to consider but if you consider it in the same light as say platinum platinum is 15 times rarer than gold so why isn't platinum 15 times the price of gold it's not so the market has a way of determining the price. Now, I believe the price of silver, gold, platinum, palladium is inaccurate for a lot of reasons. I think the price of oil is inaccurate. I think a lot of prices are inaccurate because we really don't have a free market mechanism to determine price anymore. We determine the price on a derivative. And the derivative gets called out occasionally for the actual product. <clears throat> Excuse me. But regardless of that, uh, I do think it favors this gold silver ratio. I wrote a, one of my first articles called Engineering the Price of Gold. And I went in and explained exactly how you determine the paper price of gold. It's a it's an arithmetic problem. A three third grader can do it. And at that time in 2000, the actual paper price of gold was 2,500 an ounce. Today, using that exact same equation where you look at M0, true money supply, and the gold supply purportedly held by the treasury, 265 million ounces, you do that division, comes out over $15,000. So that's the amount of M0 
base money supply that's been put in the system for the last two decades. So in that paper, I said, I think, so now I've given you the price of gold, easy to determine the theoretical paper price. What about silver? More difficult. So I go through what you just said, Jesse, and that is 16 to 1. <coughs> Excuse me. 16 to 1 is a monetary ratio, and I think we'll get there. I also said in that paper that in an extreme case, it tends to overshoot. And we might see a 10 to 1 ratio, uh, <coughs> again, which is pretty close to what the the natural ratio coming out of the ground is. But no one knows. I fully expect silver to outperform. It's done that historically. It's a smaller market. It's got more upside. Even the mainstream press is talking about $30 silver, and it's going to be in deficit for years. There's people that say it's not in deficit, but we could talk about that later on this interview. So you also posted on Twitter recently that you're thinking a broad market crash could occur in October. And you said, quote, a big sell-off will take down all assets, including gold. As in 2008, gold will lose the least and rally first. So could you break that down for us? And also, do you expect silver to perform in the same way as gold in that scenario? Yes, I do. And breaking it down, I don't remember the, the numbers, but I remember the percentages. I remember for silver. So silver is at 21. And during the crash, it went really below nine. And gold went from where it was down about 30%. Both of the metals rallied rather quickly. In silver's case, it went from, I'll call it $9 to roughly 50. So over 500%. And gold, if I remember correctly, was about a double. I'd have to look. So silver definitely outperformed gold. That was the second leg up in the silver market, <clears throat> and that was a five-fold increase. Usually the third leg up, which we're coming into once gold breaks above the 2060 level and stays there, usually the third leg up is twice as good as the, as the middle leg or the second leg. So if you get a five-fold increase in the price of silver in the middle leg, theoretically, Historically, it'll be tenfold. So if we go from the bottom, we'll call it the bottom of the illness in March 2020, it's hit, I think, 12. And you multiply that by 10, you're looking at 120. If you look at that as an anomaly, <clears throat> and silver was more around the $15, $18 range, and you do a factor of 10, you're looking at $180 silver. Now, that doesn't mean it's going to do that. All I'm doing is giving you probabilities, high probabilities. 